Hello students, welcome back to our channel and here we are again with a new video. Today we are going to study the English of class 10th and the book is First Flight and the chapter which we are going to study is chapter 2.2 that is a tiger in the zoo. So this is a poem and the poet, the writer who wrote this poem is Leslie Noyes. So before we get started and before we read the poem, we will understand what this poem is all about. That means we should have the names of this poem. So as you can see the page, at the first, at the beginning of the page, you can, you can see a short description is given. So let's read out. This poem contrasts a tiger in the zoo with a tiger in its natural habitat. That means there are two tigers. Although the, uh, there is only one tiger in the zoo, uh, in the poem, but the, uh, the poet wants to compare a tiger in a zoo versus a tiger in a forest, that is a natural habitat. The poem moves from zoo to the jungle and back again to the zoo. So, sometimes the tiger finds himself in the forest and sometimes he finds himself in the zoo. Read the poem silently once and say which stanzas speak about the tiger in the zoo and which ones speak about the tiger in the jungle. So by reading we have to find out which stanza tells you about that the tiger is in the zoo and which one tells that the tiger is in the forest. So there was a description given at the top of the page. Now there are additional things which I want to tell you that is uh, basically uh, the poet Leslie Norris is a pet lover and he appreciates the natural things, the natural environment and the habitat and the ecosystem. So, in nature, in the environment, on the earth, everything that is made or created by nature has its own significance or importance. Each and everything in nature plays a significance for a vital role. So you cannot ignore it. And another thing is there are places which is suitable for something. That means take example birds they are good to see in the skies on the trees. Fish they are good to see in the ponds, the lakes, rivers and the uh, sea. And there are lots of things. Fruits, flowers, they are good to see on the trees. If you plant them, they are dying. They are dying or they are dead. So, birds, they are good to see in the sky and they need to fly. They are not supposed to be kept in the cage or inside the house. Fish, they are good to see in the, uh, in the pond, in the lake, in the river. You can see they are good in shuffling left to right, swimming and showing their talent, showing their attitude. They are not supposed to be kept in the home, in the aquarium. The same way, all the animals that are kept in the zoo for the purpose of entertainment or for the purpose of display they are not supposed to be there their natural habitat is forest they belong to forest they belong to white places so the human being what we have done we have destroyed their natural habitats we have destroyed their home and definitely they are not happy. Just take a try on yourself. If you are abducted, if you are kidnapped and kept in a room, locked in a room 24 hours and whole week, whole year, how would you feel? Definitely you are not going to feel happy, you are not going to feel uh, joyful. The same is with the tiger, but nobody cares. We are not bothered about it. We don't think and we don't think about this. 
So the poet is highlighting all those things in this poem. Now we are going to read the poem stanza by stanza and we will understand the meaning of this poem. So before we get started, if you haven't subscribed our channel, please do subscribe our channel, like our videos and share our videos. Now we are going to start the poem. He stalks in his vivid stripes, the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet white in his white rage. So here is stripe means the line of the pattern on the tiger's body. So he is looking beautiful in his stripes, the yellow and black or the golden or black stripes which you can easily find on the tiger's body, the pattern. The few steps of his cage. So although but he is kept in a cage on pads of velvet white. So the pads means the claws of the tiger. So the claws are very soft as if they are made of velvet in his white rage. But in the cage, the tiger is not at all happy. He is quiet, but his rage. Rage that means very angry because the people, uh, the human beings, they have, they have kept him in the cage. They have locked him up. He should be lurking in shadow. Sliding through long grass near the water hole where plump deer pass. So the first stanza where the word cage is used, that means the tiger is in the zoo. And the second stanza, in the in this stanza, the poet is talking about grass, water, deer, that means in this stanza, the tiger is in the forest. So the tiger uh, should not belong to a zoo, should not belong to a cave. Where exactly it should belong? It should belong to a forest and the area, uh, the view of a forest is described in the second stanza. He should be lurking in shadow. Here the word lurk means uh, to hide in bushes, to hide behind the trees and wait for the prey. Sliding through long grasses that means running, sliding, jumping in the grasses. Near the water hole. So if you have seen movies, if you have seen uh, uh, Nat Geo, like National Geographic or Discovery or any other animal plan or any other TV programs, you will find easily whenever a tiger is going to hunt, very often he can be found near the river or near any source of water. Because lots of animals they come for uh, they come for quench their thirst, they come for come to drink the water and then the tiger attacks and uh, make them, this is the easily prey for the tiger. So the tiger exactly should belong there. But this is not the fault of a tiger. This is what we call an ecosystem or the balancing of the environment. A tiger is not the hobby of a tiger to hunt animals, but it's the only way for survival. If the tiger doesn't hunt, if the tiger doesn't eat its prey, he will die. So this is just a technique, just a method of survival. There is no fault if a tiger goes for hunting. And the other thing I must mention is any animal, be it any animal, they belong to forest. They are not supposed to be uh, in our homes or in the forest or sorry in the cage or in any kind of zoo or in any kind of circus you can say. So when we compel them when we force them and they are very much angry, then only in that case they attack on us. Usually they do not attack on human beings. They are afraid. They very well understand that uh, animals belong to uh, something different place and human beings belong to something different place. When these places are combined, the attack, the chances of attack rises. So in the third stanza, he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge, body his white fangs, his claws terrorizing the village. Now the cruelty of human beings is well explained in the third stanza. What we are doing, you have you may have read in many books about the word deforestation. What is it? It is cutting the forest and leaving lots of animals homeless and hopeless. So what we are doing? We are taking their homes just in greed for some land. 
so that we can build our houses, we can establish our factories, we can make our offices and more or less we can make money. So just in greed, we are taking as natural home of these animals. So sometimes you may find that the, that the tiger or any other, the lion or any other animal, they come to the edge of a forest where the, the forest and the village meet. There is very little difference or there is very little boundary between the two. So when the tiger doesn't find anything to eat in the forest, he comes in search of its prey. Where? Near the village or all those places that are nearby the forest. So when he finds something to eat, he goes back normally. And when we find him, what we do? We start shouting, we start attacking him, we start provoking him and then only we, when he is compelled, he doesn't have any other way, then only become homeless, he attacks on human beings. Otherwise, if he finds his way, he goes to the forest directly, without doing anything or without harming anything. Until and unless we poke our nose, he doesn't attack. So it is we, it is not the animals, it is we the human beings that are destroying and snatching and leaving them uh, hopeless, homeless. We are destroying their natural habitat, we are destroying their lives, we are destroying their homes. So it is very much natural in Vajor, in Angel, or in Hanoks. They come to our houses, they come to our villages and they, they are most likely to attack us because it's our fault. If we leave them as it is in their faults, they are not going to do anything. So this was the first, the third stanza of this one. Now in the fourth stanza, but is locked in a concrete cell. It is strength behind bars, stalking the length of his cage, ignoring visitors. But, what exactly, where exactly he is? He is in a concrete cell. Behind the bars, there are pillars, there are concrete cells and there is a cage in which he is locked. And his strength is useless there. So if you find a tiger in an open area, you are not uh, that much courageous, you are not, not, not having that much strength so that you can face him in an open area. But when it is in the forest, you dare to go closer. So, he is, he doesn't have any strength in the cage and the tiger is not supposed to be in a cage. His potentials, his strength are useless there. So he is ignoring all the visitors and he is feeling pity on the strength that I cannot use my strength, I cannot use my claws, I cannot use my teeth. So here I am compelled to eat whatever is given. I cannot hunt on my own. Instead, I have to eat whatever I have been given and the quantity also. In the forest, I can eat as much as I want, but in a zoo, I have to eat only that much uh, I am provided, I am given. The last stanza, he hears the last voice at night, the patrolling cars and he stares with his brilliant eyes and the brilliant stars. So in this last chapter, there are two meanings which you can extract. The first one is, in the zoo, when there is night, everyone goes out, nobody is there. The people, uh, the, the authorities of the zoo, they come and they make sure that everything is alright, every cage is locked and the tigers are at its proper place. And the tiger looks uh, at the light and finally uh, looks at the stars and he feels very hopeless. And the second, uh, second meaning that, that you can extract is, the last night, the tiger remembers the last night and he remembers the last voice when he heard and that was when he was in the forest and suddenly he finds some people coming in car making loud, loud voices, making some petrol sounds and they caught him in the cage, in the net and he is brought to the uh, cage and suddenly he wakes up in the morning he finds himself locked in a cage and he stares the stars hopelessly that where I am last night where I was in the forest and in the morning when I wake up I find myself in a uh, cage which is full of concrete I cannot escape I cannot go out so I am very much hopeless and it is very often that we, whenever we are hopeless what we do we look in the sky and we look at the stars 
So this was the very beautiful poem written by Leslie Norris. If you have any kind of question, any kind of doubt in your mind, you can write that in the comment box. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We will be back again with lots of videos. And uh, till then, goodbye and stay tuned.